Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes, I'm Rick Anthony. At least four times a year, usually coinciding with the change of seasons, I invite my friend and uh, sometimes colleague, Hillard, Dr. Hillard Ponce, to visit with us to talk about uh, topical subjects, uh, topics that are in the news, usually bad news. Hillard is a social political research scientist. He's a, an author, a speaker, former lecturer at the Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. Uh, so much. That's enough of an introduction. How are you, Hillard? Good it's to have you with pleasure. us. It's good to see you. Uh, always a pleasure well. to spar with you uh, these four times a year, at least on camera. We do it regularly on the off camera. <laughs> Uh, today's topic is what I and many others are calling unbridled anarchy on many of the nation's university campuses, with students making demands of the administration uh, with an ultimatum. You do what we want or else. And the or else has been pretty traumatic, uh, maybe unparalleled in our history when a student, a group of students, a relatively small group of students, can make demands that produce transformational changes in these organizations, not always good for the organization. Let's begin with a dust up at Princeton University, an institution with which you are intimately familiar, and the group of students there who are demanding that anything, any images, uh, uh, anything, any reference to Woodrow Wilson should be stricken from the university's archives, history, and so on, because of allegations that he was a racist. Well, they're, they're, that, that, you can establish facts. I mean, he pretty much was. Okay. Uh, let's, let's stipulate that. Based on whatever facts you can present, uh, he was a racist. At least he made racist comments, and there was some behavior that some would call, even taking into account the times in which it no, was let's, said. Let's make it exciting. That, let's not tap dance. Let's just, let's go with it. He, let's, uh, let's, let's accept that he was a racist. Okay, let's, let's accept it. What's your take on that situation, the steps that the students have taken, the, right. the reaction, the response on the part of the administration? So th this, is, this is why I like to come to the show. This is, it's, <laughs> I, it's, it's like I watch news and read papers, and I, then I come to your show, and I find out I, I don't know what I was reading. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> you could have just skipped the, that stuff. The, just come over. Yeah, the militants <laughs> have taken over our campuses. Yeah. I'm personally going to light my hair on fire. <laughs> the, the, the golden, what's, I, what, I, the Huns are coming. I thought you did. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is, these kids today, you know, this is right out of Bye Bye. The kids today the kids are just today. awful. Yeah. They, not like us. I, I, I love Andy Hardy. <laughs> When life is simple, yeah, right. why can't they be like we were? Oh, yeah. we used to march on Washington. We didn't think the country was acting right. We said yeah, in. But that was the. No, there, there you go, and you're anticipating my point. <laughs> they marched. We marched on Washington. We well, at didn't, the campus, we I didn't was break, a, burn, destroy, well, we, 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 or make d the kinds of demands that well, are at being my made school, today I'm, by by kids who, for the most part, don't know what they're talking about because they just don't have enough life experience to know what they're talking about. Okay, so so this is why I'm here. This is this okay. is this is just this, too good. I oh, mean yeah. <laughs> the rhetoric alone. I'm the happy militants. to provide you with a form where you so can good. enjoy yourself and enlighten so me and the rest of the world. It's so good. Okay, so so we'll start with the Princeton case and then we'll get Oh it'll get worse, yeah. Uh -huh. Or we'll get uh, go into depth and, and okay. bring and bring uh, light to the subject. Is that a don't you feel it's, that's it's, a, let's, might be a let's better go thing for that, yes. So um, yeah, so the facts are that um, in this past semester, um, students at Princeton uh, specifically um, asked the university for a bunch of things, a safe space, says I think, um, uh, help with um, faculty that they felt were mm -hmm. uh, difficult for them to deal with, and um, uh, the pain and agony of being in an institution so prominently associated with a historical figure who had produced such pain and agony in their minds. And uh, if you're on a campus, um, there's one way of looking at this that says, it, it doesn't get any better in this. Because, no, because you could teach a history course, right? Mm -hmm. And you could do what most great, mm -hmm. good professors do and explain the, the complexities of our country's past. The, the, some of the, the brilliant minds who gave us 
theories mm. of democracy who owned slaves in a personal <clears throat> way and had conducted themselves and that we now learn that you know, sure they were human after all. Mm -hmm. And Wilson is no exception, a very complex person, uh, pro a progressive, uh, uh, an emblematic person. Yes. Of the pro and the progressives were fighting corruption, the big oil folks. You mm -hmm. would think Occupy Today students would love a guy like that. And yet, to his discredit, it seems to me, he um, made a deal with the devil, the southern um, anti-reconstructionist. He felt um, uh, either uh, a personal attachment to their views or a political bargain was made, who knows. The interesting thing about him, I have an uncle named Woodrow Wilson. My grandparents, mm -hmm. in the real time of that situation, mm -hmm. didn't see a problem with that guy. Um, he was uh, acceptable to a kind of African-American who was what we call an accommodationalist. They were not going to fight segregation. So Booker T. Washington wasn't having a problem with mm -hmm. Woodrow Wilson, but the William E.B. Du Bois was. If you were an integrationist, this guy was terrible. Mm -hmm. If you had made a peace with this segregated America, this guy fit the script. So, so that's the backdrop. And so if you were trying to create a, a, a teachable moment to figure out what kind of a country are we, how does it work, this is great for you. Now, um, the, um, and, and President, uh, current Princeton and President Chris Eisgruber, to me, figured that out. And he said, and if you've noticed, they've turned the agenda solely to this Woodrow Wilson issue, mm -hmm. or put it prom most prominently. Yeah. And the other issues are now subordinated and they're frankly tougher. But if you want to have an, a teaching, an academic seminar on who is Wilson, and then bring in alums who uh, frankly could care less about Wilson, but it's what, you know, they've got all these t-shirts with this name yeah. on it. Um, and, and then when they meet the current dean of that school, it, I don't know how many of them realize she's African-American. And the sub-dean, the assistant provost, or whatever her, the title is, is also an African-American. So you've got this institution uh, dedicated to, in the name of John F. Kennedy, uh, producing policies of transformation and consequence. Mm. A, ho a home of, uh, last I, it's some number of Nobel Prize winners, I'm not sure how many, but just a bastion of excellence. And it's now captained by African Americans. And the students of the place, primarily African Americans, have are having a problem with the name on the building. It's, you, it doesn't get better than that. So, so to me, that doesn't amount to militants uh, functioning in a way that raises great questions about the future of our great culture. It says to me that these are people at an age uh, of um, uh, uh, development uh, who've been asked, who've been, who, who are on an institution of great mm -hmm. learning, who it seems to me are doing their job, which is to say, is this this power you've given me to take learning into its innermost parts and think about the way the world ought to be, are you really serious about that? And you go, oh yes, please come and make great world decisions. And like in the movie Trading Places, the Eddie Murphy character can't believe that these rich people really want his wisdom and so he starts stealing stuff. It's like, do you still love me? And so these students have taken their capital and thrown it at something that to me doesn't seem very consequential. But um, if you're going to produce this, if you're going to carry out this mission that you, the universe, the new mission, let's call it, of bringing in increasing diversity on campus and then hoping to build an America before, before it's too late so that we have decision makers and um, uh, in captains of industry who look like the rest of us, mm -hmm. then it's got to start somewhere. And this is what they've done. And the very first thing out the gate is, shouldn't we change the name of the place? Well, if you're going to be serious about this, then you got to work with them. And that's what Eisgruber has chosen to do. What's he doing? They're sitting around trying to figure out whether they really want to change the name of the place, of the Woody Woodrow Wilson School. And suppose you were to capitulate. Suppose you were to to capitulate in the name of peace. Well, you see, that's that's, that's where that's where you and I differ because I just because you're sitting around talking with people doesn't mean you've agreed to anything. Oh, no, I, I totally agree right, with right. that. Well, but, but dialogue but, is yeah, valuable. Yeah, but, but but here's here's what that here's what that room's going to look like. There are going to be uh, alums of consequence sitting there. There going to there's going to be an African American dean of this place sitting mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. There's going to be uh, faculty 
some of whom know a little bit about who Woodrow Wilson really was. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be students sitting there, plus the administration. And in the backdrop, there's a Supreme Court that's been pretty interested in affirmative action and has asked the question, well, what good is affirmative action? What's, what's it really buying us? And a bunch of people have May built their careers on answering that question in the affirmative. We should have affirmative. We should have diversity. And if you're a skeptic and you say, what's it gotten us? It's gotten us this crazy talk. Changing the name of a building as opposed to coming up with answers about the new inequality or mm -hmm, global mm -hmm. climate change, stuff like that. That's what you want to spend all this intellectual and fiscal capital on, this name, and you don't, it, that's it. And it can be frustrating to me, I don't know about you, it just seems like a trivial exercise, but if you think about it as a process and you go, okay, let's begin this process. And if I'm a student of some competence, right, and I'm in this room, yeah. and all of this starts unrolling and unpacking, do I really want to spend my capital on naming, changing the name of the building, or do I, find, do I start realizing they're taking me seriously, they're showing me great respect, and I begin the idea of feeling connected to an, an institution, and I take my role in it more seriously. It's a gamble. It could backfire. But I don't see this leading to capitulation and running um, in fear of, you know, but, the, the rabble. But I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a question. Suppose the outcome is that the president, the administration, Capitulate, as was the case. Well, yeah, but a I'm, different but set of circumstances in, in Oklahoma. No, no, no. But I, but I actually, I actually no. I we've word known each other. I actually know what you're saying. But you, the, what the problem is, you're using the verb capitulate. If he capitulates, by definition, that's not a good use no. of people's time. But if in a room of people, as I've described it, yes. there's a discussion and mm -hmm. a and a decision, and they have some ra rationale that mm -hmm. wouldn't that off the face of it wouldn't sound reasonable to me to change the name of the building mm -hmm. if the alums and the you know uh, faculty think this is what they ought to do that's not a capitulation that's somehow a reasoned discourse and if you trust the process and you'd mm -hmm. say well they, I guess they had their reasons but they would have to convince me and right now I don't see a convincing case. Does the, does the are you at all concerned about the precedent it might set? Because the Arabs, the, there, there are groups of Arab students on that campus, as there are in many others. But could any constituency then that has a voice make a demand and expect the same process? Let's sit, have dialogue, discuss, yeah. the same high level. No, 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 I get it. Sucking I, up all those right, resources. Right, right, right. And is that fair to the majority of the student body who are there? Right. To learn, yeah. you know, we could talk about no, no, that. No, no, no. I, What's I, the purpose of right. higher education right. today? So, so. The way I unpacked this was I said the case to be made for diversity on campus had been you want uh, our visions, our people mm -hmm. who command our visions, to uh, develop with it with a with relationships of people from all walks of life. Yes. You don't want sooner or later, given the way our country's working, I think it'll be a majority minority, middle of the century. Mm -hmm. You and I may get to see this if we play our cards right. Uh, at some point, that means we all will encounter an arena, a world of diversity, yes. no matter what your background is. So do you wait till you get on the work site and then you got to deal with everybody's not like me? Or do you wait till you're uh, in college before you deal with it? Or at what point do we, quote unquote, deal with our society in, 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 its, in, its, in, in its form, its, its changing form? And the, uh, the, the gamble is, well, would it be ideal if we did it in throughout our life course mm -hmm. but in college we have this unique opportunity to, to 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 deal with it and if you do if you do go out of your way to create an increasingly diverse campus then the consequence of that is is what we're now facing facing which are uh, our people on the campus uh, looking around at each other and in effect wasting the opportunity by worrying about trivial things yes that's how I would phrase it, and and the response can be lots of them. Capitulation, if you care to use that term, or you could be a reactionary and say, well, this was a mistake. <laughs> let's let's not do this anymore. <laughs> right. Or you could start looking at it the way I think you and I actually do look at things as a as a really good site for policymaking. <laughs> and and I I'm sorry I'm a bit long-winded, 
But, but one response to it is to say, well, let's um, use discourse and the tools of the academy to, 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 to look at the issue. And the issue in this case may not, in our minds, be substantive. It's the name of, mm -hmm. the, of a mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. or a picture on a wall. But if you establish a process that we will use reason, discourse, analysis, uh, uh, collections of opinion to address issues, then today the issue is should the <clears throat> building have a different name, but tomorrow the issue could be um, how uh, much money should we put into a new major at the school or something like that. I, I understand what you're saying, right. and okay. in principle I have to agree with you. My concern is, once you let that genie out, um, should or on other campuses and other public buildings and so on erase the name of Lincoln, Roosevelt, Jefferson, Washington, because they had slaves? Because at the time, in those times, the standard of, of conduct, the mores, was it's okay to have slaves. We look back at it now and say, my God, it's reprehensible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, I get so it. How and, far and, do we take yeah, this? Yeah. No. I it, yes. So, so if if to, if, per, to permit young people, as I said, bright as they may be, they still don't have enough life experience to know what they're talking about. Leave those college campuses. Go into the real world where they can't do that. They can't use that. I want to sit down and talk with you. Maybe what the books say is it should be, but that's not the real world. Yeah, no. So, so it's, 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 it's learning tolerance for difference. It's also learning to pick your fight in a no, very that, real world. We, actually, you went for, this is not good, because we agree. And, and, and let's Did push it. Did we just agree on something? Yeah, I know. Ah. So, so, but here's the thing. So there are two ways of thinking about it. One is, after, after the, day, the day after you've gotten the building name changed, and then what? Mm. And one way of looking at it, well, then every student's going to get right. into this thing. Yep. But at a certain point, right, you just, there are just not enough buildings to keep doing this forever. <laughs> and it's at a certain point, you've got to look around and go. No, it's, it's not the buildings. It's which textbooks. No, but, 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 but let me, let me get, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm tracking on an idea here. Okay. So one way to look at it is, and then what, and then what, yeah. which is what every parent does with, you know, in the teen years of, you know, and because you're not going to use, there are certain tools you can use as a parent. You yes. could throw them out of the hat. But most of us would go, okay, and then what would you do? So mm -hmm. that's one mm -hmm. tact, okay? But another th tact, and that's a good tact, by the way, just saying. But another tact is suppose this is a symptom as opposed to um, the real root issue. Suppose it's just a symptom. Mm -hmm. And that's what's got my attention. I think it's just a symptom. And it's a, but a symptom of what? And here's, here's, here's why I'm so excited to be with you today. So if you, if you look at what's been discussed um, in the press, and then you add to it what, you know, it turns out your guest today actually knows about. Here's what we've got. This is actually, <laughs> no, this, is, this is what we call a reveal. This is really cool okay. stuff. This is, you're going to love this. So one of the um, demands was some, for something called safe spaces. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? It's, it's, it means to be safe from any threat or yeah, risk. What does that mean? If, I, if, if you're a, a dean and a student asks you for a safe space, it what the heck are It probably means having security. But the real answer is you don't know. Well, do you actually know? We, we can, no, I don't. Okay, good. Because I don't cause, know. Cause I actually uh, so do I'm know. guessing that the only reasonable definition. No, no, I definition. actually know. I, okay. and it, and it, you do. Yes, oh. and it's going to it's going to it's, it's going to entertain you. So, the earliest that I could find the the, the term safe space yeah. in its use was uh, as gay students began uh, to um, feel that it was important for them to uh, open up, mm -hmm. uh, self-identify, mm -hmm. and then deal with consequences. And the issues that they felt that they were experiencing were homophobia. Like, mm -hmm. I've told everybody I'm gay, <clears throat> and now I'm getting ridiculed right. or harassed or right. you know, mistreated in the classroom or outside the classroom. And you and I both can imagine what that might be like. Yes. So what some faculty began doing was they would, there was a symbol, and I'm not, I'm not savvy enough to know, but it meant on their door next to their name, I'm a safe space for you. You're not going to have to deal with this, and I can help you. So that was the original meaning. I didn't of, know that. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So that was the original meaning of it, and and you and I might say, you know, that actually makes some sense. I haven't finished. So then the next manifestation of it, and this is even cooler. 
So at, at Princeton, where I had this as a personal experience, they, uh, uh, the Michael Eric Dyson, I don't know if you know him, but he's no. a, the give, he has the gift of gab. He's, you often see him on cable TV, and he, he's almost like a poet, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's got, mm -hmm. quick, and he's got, he's from the left, so maybe that's why you don't know him. But, but he's, he's a, critic, a critical th thinker. Mm -hmm. And he's unpredictable, by the way. He, in some ways, he might share views with you. They brought him to campus. He's a son, he was a preacher, but also a thinker. He's a, a religion major or something. And, um, and he'd given some talk condemning Bill Cosby. <laughs> And this was before Bill had his really big problems. This this guy didn't approve of Bill's lecturing, or as he would put it, yeah. hectoring young men to be act as responsible adults. He he thought there was something wrong with that, and and, and, and so we didn't agree. So over dinner in this room of thirty or forty students, before he opened it up, I said, you know, I went to a Catholic college, and what I learned is that there are many types of sin or wrongs, and not all sins the same. And so, do you really want to use the equipment for dealing with a mortal sin mm -hmm. for a guy who mm -hmm. is, you know, mis 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 misdirected in his mm -hmm. sense of what it what <clears throat> it takes to be a good a good adult in our system? And he wasn't having any of it, <laughs> so that didn't go very well. But then he opened up the room, and it's as if he knew what was needed. And he asked the students. He says, as he, and, and I think his words were something, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, these youngsters who had been uh, put on campus through who knows what kinds of policies began talking about what they felt they couldn't talk about, which was yeah. the murder of a relative, the uh, coming apart of a family, the uh, endless uh, in, in, uh, injuries they felt because... When you're around true wealth, and you, by the way, I happen to know, have been around true wealth, if you're not you're wealthy yourself, that's that's a game changer. Yes. And if, if and if I'm yes. from the other side of the fence, dealing with that daily can be, you know, something I hadn't anticipated. So so this was a room where youngsters of color felt they could talk about their uh, adjustment issues. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I'm feeling trauma because I'm dealing with a death. I'm feeling trauma because uh, this is just a, a, a challenge to every fiber of my body and I just need to feel like I can talk about it. So that was another manifestation of mm -hmm. safe space where, you know, for some of us, when we were at college, you might, you might have gone to see the pastor or if you were lucky, you had a g close group of friends. But there was a place you could kind of let your hair down and talk about but, what but was... What does safe space mean to a group of African-American undergraduates? Well, that's the problem. It could mean the, the origin of the idea had yes. some meaning. Yes. And, you know, and then as you popularize something, it starts meaning anything. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so that's what the issue is, that there's a, there's a serious issue In, of, of, a, of helping young people make adjustments. And then there's this, as, as the, as the, um, head, as the, person at Yale who recently resigned her job was trying to explain in there was another one of these mm -hmm. cases was uh, someone the Yale had said be careful this Halloween not to offend people with your costumes and a house faculty director I think is the new term in the old days they were called headmasters uh, the wife of the headmaster said well you know guys do we really want to cede power to the institution to help us figure mm -hmm. out things for ourselves which to me seems <clears> like <throat> a pretty smart thing mm -hmm. and and students said are you um, trying to make me cry and it was painful video stuff like that and and so that was the idea do I want the institution to take res to, to take responsibility for the for the for mm -hmm. real manifest problems that that people have to deal with um, and, and, or not and I actually have a take on that we have about five minutes left. Okay. I want to contrast the situation in Princeton, uh, which is it can be rationalized as we have been doing, and contrast that with Oklahoma. Well, I don't want to because I want to close out on a thought. I actually want to finish a thought. Okay. So the question is, so the core question is, do I? What do I want the institution to do? I think I lost control. Yes, you I'm did. I'm the interview. Well, then set your hair on fire and <laughs> talk about how these militant <laughs> students are just. But but I'm but I'm actually doing with. I'm going to protest. Well, and I'm and I think that's a good thing for us to, okay. to to get into. But that's how I would like the campuses to respond. So that leads nicely into what I think it should be institutional 
what are institutional choices for this? I think campuses should control what goes on in the classroom and try to be helpful for what goes on and responsible for what goes on outside the classroom. But I think if, if we did certain things in the classroom, we would make some progress as we carry out a mission I endorse of helping our, shape our society by making sure our campuses are diverse and representative and, mm -hmm. uh, and help our students respond to the challenges of a <clears throat> new order. Mm -hmm. And so there are three things campuses can do. One, did you know that there are only a handful of campuses in this country with 3,000 colleges where students with low income and or students of color get A's in math? No. And do you know why that's important? Proceed. Right, because uh, what it means is, our, just because I've increased the, my catchment, bringing in the numbers of students in, in, on the campus, in, in every high school, somebody's getting A's, right? Yeah. But if, I'm, if I've created a college campus and I look at who gets A's by subject matter, if the distribution of A's starts to match the distribution of concerns on that campus. Mm -hmm. That tells me there's a problem there. So the first thing you can do is you can do what they do at the University of Georgia. And they make sure, not by legislating grades, but by producing uh, academic competence in certain ways that are easily um, mimicked, replicated, that, and they look at it. Every year, how many students mm -hmm. from Challenging back, mm -hmm. challenge back, or get an A's. You and get two minutes to make your right. Right two points. So that's the easiest one because when a student gets an A in math, they feel empowered. If I'm do, if I'm hitting, making, what they, mm -hmm. if I'm hitting my numbers, nobody cares how I act yes. for for openers. So that's one. A second one is um, maybe we should be more flexible in how the how we encourage faculty to teach. And one of the ways I like to do it is to turn the classroom as often as possible into an arena of problem solving. Mm -hmm. And the short version of it is when you turn it into collective problem solving, essentially you find out that the kid next to you who, you know, may not be your stereotype, yeah. knows more, to, I, I, can be helpful. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I love and that. if you can do stuff like that, yeah. then I think youngsters start feeling, yeah. quote unquote, safe on campus. And, and highly experiential. And respected. Yeah. Yes. Right, and, it, and so to me it's a great challenge, Yes, I agree. and there's smart things to do about I agree. it. And That's real world. Thank you. Yeah. Well, the third point. Let's stop while we're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want the third point. <laughs> actually, I, actually, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, in the, in the short time we have left, quickly, your, your reaction to Oklahoma. Is that the, was that the right thing to do with the right outcome? So there are a couple of them. Uh, there was another one in Missouri yes. where um, the football team went on strike. Yes. And so the, ch the chancellor and the uh, campus director left. Right. Look, let's call those outliers. When your football okay. team, <laughs> if, yeah. if, you're if you're in a certain That was outrageous. That was absolutely outrageous. Well, yeah. Those scholarships should have been pulled. Uh, Let's just say there should have point, been consequence, and there was if, if it got to the point the football team wasn't playing, then all bets are <laughs> off. You, you, if, if you're talking to the alums worried about the football team, you're not going <laughs> to, rational discourse isn't going to work. It's, 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 that's right. It's not a citadel of learning. <laughs> uh, well, as always, a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I'm not sure which world problem we'll solve next time, but I'm sure we'll have <laughs> sure several to choose from. <laughs> Let me see, the next time we visit, which will be the first quarter or so of next year, yeah. uh, we, no, they will be in the throes of the election. Oh, what, oh, so what we'll fun, we'll, oh, what fun it is to yes. watch <laughs> these gonna give you a political gift. primaries. <laughs> Good to be with you as always. Thank you, Hillard. My guest today has been Hillard Ponce, Dr. Hillard Ponce, who always has an opinion on something. Uh, and I'm delighted to share the time with him. Uh, until next time, this is 30 Minutes. I am Rick Anthony. Take very good care of yourselves.